Okay, so it's really early in the morning. So we're gonna make this really cool and fun. <laughs> um, my name is Melissa Henderson. I'm the head of community at ApeWorks. We help deploy smart contracts onto the Ethereum blockchain. We're a developer framework for Python, data scientists, and comp traders. Um, I'm also the creator of Violet Summer Zine, which is a content and lifestyle driven um, platform. So if you check out my NFTs, a little bit, um, or my VR site, violetsummerzine.com. And I want to introduce my amazing panelists for this morning. So do you want to start? Sh sure. So Tyler Mulvihill. Um, I'm the co-head of NFTs at Consensus. Uh, prior to Consensus, I started a company called Trium, which is a full lifecycle management platform for NFTs. Consensus acquired that company. And oddly enough, if you any know anything about the history of Consensus, I actually started that under the other Consensus umbrella, Venture Production Studio model. So. I've been hopping around the consensus mesh um, for a long time. And my co my co-head is Jonna Powell, and she's up there in that shiny jacket. Um, if you want to talk to her after this, too. I'm David. I'm with Super Air. I uh, joined Super Air uh, April of last year, but been helping the co-founders out uh, since October 2018. I remember coming to uh, ETH Denver when it was 500 people. I'm, I'm a local here in Denver. And, would be hanging up uh, iPads on the walls with them and not really understanding what NFTs are. Um, I'm from like the enterprise software world and then when this thing exploded, they brought me over to figure out how to uh, work creatively with brands and uh, agencies and how to uh, move them into Web3. So here I am. Awesome. Uh, awesome. So yeah, there's been a, a breakthrough NFT trend and. 2021, I know there was, NFTs have been around for a few years, but I think with this upcoming market, creators really grasp hold to the concept of ownership and deploying their uh, creativity on the blockchain. So from you know, a super rare perspective, um, what are you seeing um, on your platform in terms of like uh, the most, I guess, minted product products and um, yeah, like from you know a business perspective, what does that mean for for your brand? Yeah, so super, we were the first digital art marketplace. Uh, we only work like with one of ones with artists. So we, the big things we do is we curate artists. So separate from like OpenSea, you have to be accepted on onto the platform. Um, and then second, all the brands and agencies, they're all coming to us saying like, how do we get on? How do we get into this? And what we've been advising is we're all about like empowering the artists. It's all about like putting the artists in control of like their content and IP and everything that they want to create. So when brands come to us, like Porsche is a good example. They, instead of saying, hey, we want to create the NFT on our behalf, they uh, empowered a designer on the team to create like the sketch and then back the artist. So. When we talk to these like brands, we say, why don't we bring on the artist or why don't you work with artists on the platform? They're the ones that create the work. It's a, they're, we're gonna back them from the super perspective and the brand is gonna empower them. So like that's the major shift for what we see or the evolution of this whole web three is how do brands empower the creators that are at their companies or work with creators that have the same beliefs. Awesome. Should I go? Yeah, of course. <laughs> okay, so so the question was, um, what are you seeing on the on your platform? Yeah, right? like what are you seeing on your platform from like a consensus standpoint? Because you guys touch, you know, a lot of different um, elements of NFTs from you know the wallet side, um, and you know how what are the biggest I guess takeaways from 2021? Yeah, so I guess. The consensus business, NFT business unit, really started the last quarter of 2021. So we're, we've only been around for a short while, but the thing that's unique about consensus is that the business model is a bit different than almost every other company. So for those of you who don't know, consensus runs Infura, consensus runs and created MetaMask, consensus uh, created Truffle, Developer Suite. So really, if you're doing anything in Web3, you're touching those products um, and maybe, People probably don't know this either, but the company is incredibly interested and in doing a lot of work around decentralizing not only these products, but the company. So we have a lot of room to do really cool stuff. 
And our business model is different in that we don't want to just be a SaaS platform for NFT minting. We don't want to just be a marketplace for secondary sales because the ethos of what we're doing with the business unit is to bring the next tens of millions of users into Web3. And so if you've used the MetaMask wallet, if you've used some of these developer tools, you know the, shortcoming, the shortcomings of Web3 generally. And so the amount of, the amount of work, that, the amount of change that we can affect from a business unit to like improve the NFT display on MetaMask is, is epic. Mm -hmm. So instead of just driving as much volume through our, our, our marketplace as possible to try to take a fee over that, really we can, we can change the business model in that as long as we're getting mainstream users or new users into the ecosystem using our wallets and our tools, that could be a win. So um, what we're seeing in, I guess the, the, the shift that we're seeing is that um, brands are now ready, the business models are now um, somewhat fleshed out, and so <laughs> somewhat fleshed out, like very loosely somewhat fleshed out, um, and, and what that does is it allows us to have faster conversations, and so um, we can onboard them into Web3. I love that. So I know we were talking about that backstage, the relationship between brands and these creators and that ownership, you know, perspective, because in Web2, a lot of the brands, like you work for a brand and then that's, you know, you're kind of under their identity. But Web3 is about this digital identity and um, NFTs are just the first iteration of that. So when you are bringing on these new brands into the NFT space, how are you maintaining the values of Web3 or, or these values that we're building as a community um, in Web3 from, I guess, a super rare perspective because you've been around with super rare, you were number seven employee, right? <laughs> yeah, so Time Magazine is, is one brand that has seemed to have done it right and, and understands it there's been brands that come to us and so what time magazine has done is like when they they did the front covers so they already have a community that like people wanted the nfts or it's kind of like its own art when they work with artists like when people did the front cover of time we had people on board or create the nft and then send it to the time magazine wallet so oh, wow. we're pretty much telling brands now let's bring on the artist or like let's understand or find you guys or find the artist that like works for them and let's market from the super rare and the brand perspective. They have the dollars and the reach and the essentially the big budgets to get the story out. We always tell them to do that. If they come to us and ask like, typically they'll come to us and say, this is how we're gonna do it and it's been great kind of saying, that's just not how it's gonna work here and it won't work on super rare. Yeah, good, good point. Um, I think brands still really need hand-holding into the space. So um, most brands come and they ask us, like, what, what should we do? H how should we market this? How do we not screw this up? How does this not look like a money grab? Mm -hmm. um, and the, the really cool thing is that a lot of brands are totally okay with going straight Web3 and requiring their users to use, like, MetaMask as, as like, uh, they need to get Ether. They need to, like, go through the process. They need to download MetaMask. They need to understand what it means to, like, have a wallet. And part of the reason for that is because it's less work for the brands. And so if you, if you want to go through um, like a fiat flow, so if you want to offer in credit card, then one, you're ostracizing the Web3 folks who have their MetaMask and they're just like, I want to buy an NFT, but now I have to buy this with a credit card and then, then like wait for a week. And it's just, it's not how we're used to doing stuff. So brands are like, okay, let's go. Let's, let's require them to download a MetaMask. And frankly, everyone, you know, everyone says that the wallet experience needs help, yes. but and, and we all say this, but I mean, I keep, I, I don't know what we're talking about Meta, Meta, MetaMask a lot, like too much, but um, we, I saw 500 people be onboarded into MetaMask in like two, 30 seconds or less. So I don't think the onboarding is actually the issue. It's just like, the, what do I do with this and how do I understand seed phrases and all that crazy right. stuff afterwards? So it actually doesn't affect the sales process of the NFTs. So when you tell a brand that and you're like, okay, all we have to do is just put a button here that says connect MetaMask and like don't have to do anything else and the money will come directly to us. Okay, let's go. So, um, but that being said, we also add, like, we've created a fiat flow that's kind of beautiful now. So we'll be rolling that out to more normies, but it's through a MetaMask flow. So it's, it's the backdoor Trojan horse that we're all used to. Awesome, yeah, I mean, I think that MetaMask could do better with interoperability, I mean, with other layers, like we're, you can you know connect to Matic or you know the Harmony One 
network. Um, how do you explain to brands, you know, about the Gatsby's because that's kind of one of the biggest challenges with the narrative right now and or just in crypto in general. A lot of Web2 normies were like, oh, well, this is bad for the environment. Like, how do you explain to them um, about the different uh, just NFT structure, uh, structures that they can um, you know, take that route, not just, you know, have a blue chip on Ethereum, but maybe put it on Polygon or put it on, you know, the near one of the pro other protocols, um, I guess, from like a, an artist perspective on Super Rare, like, how are you navigating that? So Super Rare is just Ethereum based. So that is a big question. That is a big uh, issue that, like, you have to, especially if you're an artist, like, IMR, like, Third world country, say, uh, high gas. So, yeah. So uh, that is a big issue. Uh, we are looking at like adding chains or looking at the roll ups and everything else. But when brands come to us, yeah, we got to walk them through the. You got to get some ETH for gas, and if you're gonna empower these artists to do this on your behalf, you better send them the ETH, or are you gonna uh, pay for these fees? So, right, right now. Like we are, uh, it's a high transaction. Like the average sale on Super is like 10 ETH or so. We do see it as an issue. Like we do need to figure this out for the smaller type of artists and sales because um, gas is expensive. And then last year we had the whole like the carbon offset issues and questions and brands are worried about ruining the environment. And we just came out and, and showed this statistics that like 70% of the mining happens on renewable sources. We did a couple of white papers just to like make them feel comfortable, and that kind of just like blew by. Um, but it's obviously going to continue to come up. Yeah. So um, our platform is EVM compatible with all side chains and L2 solutions. So Polygon and Polygon Scale Palm. I mean, Consensus built the Palm network. Nice. Um, we have relationships with almost all of the L2s and and side chains that are really uh, where the where the activity is happening. Um, so not really an issue. I think we're actually, a lot of what we have to do now is, is focused on L2s because Decentraland, for example, like you have to launch on Polygon. Right. And OpenSea, if you want, if a brand wants a secondary sales to happen on OpenSea, then you need to be either Polygon or Ethereum mainnet. So you don't even have an option. Like, <laughs> it's, it's like, if you want to do a wearable in Decentraland and you want to list it on OpenSea, right. it's like Polygon's your option. So. It's kind of a forced, it's a forced hand there. Um, uh, and yeah, I, I agree with your point. Um, when, you, when, you, when you connect to a network on MetaMask, it should automatically connect to that network. Yeah. So you don't go like, wait, oh, where's all my money? What, what's happening? Or like, how come I have like 5,000 ETH? Like, yeah, yeah, you're like, whoa, I'm rich. Whoa, and I'm rich. <laughs> <laughs> but it's rinky ETH. Yeah, that's happened a couple times. You thought you got an airdrop, but uh, yeah. oh, by the way, all that's coming. Um, airdrops, I, I, yes. I, Oh, not, no, not the airdrops. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, I did not say that. Um, just kidding. <laughs> like, MetaMask token coming soon. Like, just kidding. I didn't say that. Um, no, all, all of, the, all of the, uh, the, the UI changes and, like, the, the really the table stake stuff, yeah. um, the NFT business unit is affecting change within Consensus and the MetaMask team and the, and the Inferior team to make sure that the experience is, like, absolutely killer. So um, it's not a static thing. This is going to get so cool this year. Yeah. I, I'm looking forward to it, and I guess like, what is the most popular? I know David, we were talking about music NFTs because they're kind of break the breakout NFTs, and you know, culture really drives innovation. And you know, what what have you been seeing in the space? Like, what are some of the popular ones um, that you can chat about? So actually, this we had a party on Thursday with our for our rare community, and actually just heard of a crazy cool utility that's coming. One of the uh, artists that played his name's Balkan Bump. Um, he wants. We're gonna do a show at uh, at uh, Red Rocks this summer, and he's gonna take an NFT that he's gonna essentially mint the song in like various pieces, and then let the community buy the pieces. And then now I'm not a tech guy, but our smart contracts uh, guy said that this is possible. But ultimately, if you go to the show and enough people say that they're at the show and they want that song to be played, he'll get a ping. So now you're creating utility within like the few people that are going to the show can now essentially decide when that song is played. 
So that's just a pretty cool utility thinking outside the box with NFT, like with music. Um, it's like every day there's something totally different and crazy that's like popping up. Yeah. Yeah. Are you guys actually uh, super rare putting on the show at Red Rocks? Uh, so, well, this all is, came out on Thursday, and <laughs> since I'm head of partnerships, I'm going to make this happen. <laughs> so, okay, make sure we're all in the oh, invite. That's Thank awesome. You. <laughs> we got to throw a party at, at Red Rocks. That's cool. Um, Maybe you can partner. Yeah, actually, so this is the perfect segue. So, um, part, so the, my, my old company created uh, a generative art and music project called Euler Beats. If you don't know it, it's, you probably know it as Euler Beats, but it's, it's Euler. Um, and it, the whole concept was to kind of figure out what musicians wanted to do and then build a platform based on the learnings. So one, check this project out, it's awesome. Two, um, we have something called the Remix Studio, which is complete, waiting for launch. Cool. Um, only in Discord we've mentioned this, so this is a little bit of alpha. Uh, and, and so what we've done is we, the, the last launch was called Futura, and you could buy a mix. And these mixes were um, made up of different clips. So what you were talking about before, it's almost like samples in, in real life. Um, and so each of these mixes has a variety of rarity traits based on, so it's like, it's like PFPs for music with a bunch of rarity traits. And so if you have two mixes, you can use this remixing tool, mix them together, create a remix, and then sell that yourself. Um, so you're kind of, you now, you now become the musician and like none of us here are probably producers or actually all of us are probably DJs like in this, in this uh, era. At this point. <laughs> yeah. But, but if you're not, it's, it's super simple. So you just like click the sounds that you like, you click mint NFT and there's like a bunch of cool mechanisms that like you can get 50% off if you own this and yada yada. Um, and then it creates a new NFT. So the reason we we're doing all this is to create something called the Euler Beats Artist Platform which allows uh, any artist, mainstream, little, big, to, when they release their song, they have a sample pack, they can release it, and then you can do the same thing. So, like, imagine Tiesto and, like, no-name DJ, like, all of a sudden, somebody figures out that their sound's mashed together, sounds amazing, and they can go on this platform and do this. So, we're going to release the Remix Studio, check out how people are using it. The engine is all built for Euler Beats Artist, and sometime this year, when we learn about what people actually want, um, that's gonna, I basically do what I think you just said. Um, so yeah, maybe a collab, like maybe we can do all the work and you guys can throw the party. Maybe we can write the smart contracts. Yeah, and yeah, like, let's do it. <laughs> we can do a plug-in. Yeah. Um, no, that's, so, that's super dope. Um, and I guess the, I wanna end with DAOs because they are the future and you see a lot of these NFT communities becoming DAOs. Um, like, how, do, how are you guys empowering DAOs and kind of be your, just be your own bank uh, from a MetaMask perspective or consensus perspective and then also from a super rare perspective? Yeah, so super rare became, or essentially 1.0 was just a regular company and then we became a DAO August of last year. So we, the coolest thing about the DAO is like the early adopters, the collectors and artists essentially received like coins, uh, governance tokens for being the first to create and help create this marketplace. So I was a since I was a collector uh, in 2018 or 2019, I was essentially given tokens for being part of the on-ramp of this, uh, of this uh, company. Now, uh, 2.0, what we're doing now is we have uh, space. So you could put in a proposal and the community decides like, hey, can you create a space? Um, for, to create your own super rare, essentially. So now you can build out and curate the artists of your choice. So for example, we have uh, a group in Mexico or an artist that's empowering Latin American artists. And so we brought him on and it's called Metaphysica. And now they can create whatever artists that they want. They don't have to go through the central authority or through super rare. Um, and then we take a cut. So we're gonna be rolling that out all this year. Um, and that's just like the 2.0 of like, now you have a chance to either get on super rare or uh, be onboarded through all of these different partners or what we call spaces. That's pretty dope. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so Consensus is doing a ton of work around DAOs. We have a crypto economics team full of quants and trad finance people who understand crypto too. Um, so they're doing a ton of work around tokens, DAOs, decentralization, what it means for our products, how to decentralize things like Infura. Um, 
so not leaking anything here, but like the amount of work under the covers that's happening at this this company that people don't normally get a, get a view in. It's absolutely amazing seeing this happening. Um, shout out, shout shout out to Euler Beats again. We we donated one of the uh, one of the originals to a DAO at that point. It was like seven hundred or eight hundred people, and it was the biggest DAO at that time. Now that's like that is is, is ridiculous to say. It's like Eat Denver, five hundred people right. was a big was a big place. Um, <laughs> so yeah, where, where's DAO? Where are DAOs and NFTs? One, the work that. Um, that Pre and Aaron are doing at formerly Open Law that, that are responsible for, for Flamingo DAO, et cetera, is, right. is awesome. You have to follow what they're doing, even though all their DAOs are very expensive. I've asked him to make one cheaper for me. Um, uh, but yeah, no, one of the interesting things is we all see the future where we're working for multiple DAOs instead of one big company. But to get there, we know the tooling is, like, is pretty far behind. Mm -hmm. So when, when you look around the ecosystem and um, you're looking at places to work that you want to work. One of the things that I majorly considered when we were selling this company was like, can I actually, is there a glide path to doing this? Right. So like, what does it mean to be in a DAO at consensus? And so we're working all of that out now, not like, okay, you can't do that because now you have an ownership of a competing something or other. Right. Um, so I don't know. I just, it's, it's really, just really good to be back at consensus. I think it's also like wealth building too, because like, for example, if you're in crypto chicks, um, and you hold, you know, five of their PFPs, and now all of a sudden you're in their DAO, and then you go to another, you know, DAO, and you're, you know, doing stuff with them. You're essentially building your own digital wealth, and I think that's the power of like DAOs and communities. So, is there any like tooling that uh, y'all rep recommend to brands? Like, what what if brands want to start their own like? Yeah. DAO of like super fans or anything like that. Like, have you seen any movement in this space so far? I guess David, from a super rare partnerships perspective, we talked about Gucci. Yeah. So there's like, I mean, essentially, what the spaces that we created is essentially allowing brands or or an individual or person to create their own like company um, and onboard. So it's I think it's like a subset of a DAO, like they're still gonna be the ones in control, but like they're gonna be empowering whoever they want to, like as Super Rare empowers the artist. Um, the whole DAO thing, I, I, I wouldn't say this to companies, but I would say just take a step back and let this thing bake out for a few more years. Um, Cause you definitely do give up control and a lot of like things that I don't think a lot of private companies are ready for. Yeah, yeah I, think, I think DAOs are step two. Step one is just getting these companies um, comfortable with Discord. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes. And Not getting rugged on Discord, right? I'll, I'll say that, that a lot of the... So even within... I wish I could t tell more about what we're doing that, that's going to happen next quarter. So at, at like ETH uh, Austin or something, we'll, we'll have another one of these conversations and talk more broadly about what we're doing. But these brands, they're diving in and they understand that they need to, do, that they need to get on Discord. And so community management is obviously a huge everyone like just give me your best community manager it doesn't matter but they don't like these people don't really exist yet right. like there's no job there's no somebody with like three years of community experience that understands bot control on discord and setting it up and and like speaking for the company etc but they're they're actually they're actually saying okay which is scary because we're essentially saying okay okay to them and giving them the green check mark because okay. they they're we're the trusted advisors mm -hmm. and you know, things can go very wrong in Discord. So, again, at Consensus, we have an absolutely enormous customer success team that manages a lot of the customer success and onboarding and, and these ticket answering and, and managing Discords. And it's like, it's like 200 person team and it's getting bigger every day. So I think that is, that is an insane market opportunity to create a DAO around um, so that there's a, just a group of community members that don't have to necessarily just go on one project. It's like they can manage five projects. Mm -hmm. And that's almost like a DAO inside of a DAO um, that gives you exposure to a lot of stuff. That sounds very meta. I'm like, I'm already like, my, my yeah. head is like spinning. Um, but, okay, cool. Yeah, so I guess we can end with your favorite PFPs in your wallets right now. Uh, I guess I can go. I got it Hyper Demon. Um, by uh, late FX, I was like airdropped and I thought that was really cool. Um, and then Emily Lazar's September Monsters. So um, my theme is more like monsters and like fun demons um, that are in my wallet right now. What's in yours? I don't dox myself ever. 
because I feel like if I do, Ooh, okay. <laughs> then people will just wallet stalk me. And then oh, shoot. Okay. when I, I get rugged on a couple of my projects, they're going to get upset at me. Okay. So I, I don't do that. But I really, like, I really like two things. One, things that are at risk of IP violation. Okay. <laughs> because one, it's really cool. Uh, two, it goes back to the crypto anarchy type roots that we all kind of share. Mm -hmm. So just test the waters, like, like maybe toe the gray line a little bit, because we're, we're not the ones creating the projects, but we, you can buy it, like see what happens. It, like, it'll, it'll, then the stories will, will pop up. And the, sec the second thing is recently, I've gotten a lot more back into physical art. Okay. Um, and now it annoys me because there's like absolutely zero correlation between physical art that doesn't have anything to do with NFTs and like the world that we all live in. So I, I'm trying to get back into it to figure out how to bridge that gap. Because as soon as you get all the like the trad artists in, th that, is, that is an exponential increase of people that enter this world. So kind of a weird answer, but no I alpha I mean, here. I like that DeFi answer. Um, okay, I'll take it. <laughs> so my uh, biggest PFP backing the community is amazing. Uh, the crypto dick butts. Any... So I'm a big dick butt holder. Uh, okay. <laughs> I've been uh, super bullish on them. We're going to be buying. This is the utility that I love is the, we, they created a DAO. All the revenues are going towards buying uh, Gooch Island. So we're out looking for an island. Um, and if you own a dick butt, then you get to go to uh, Gooch Island. So check okay. it out. Awesome. so hard this um, Meta Birkins is actually one of my favorite, like, towing the line, because, like, come on, like, fuck Hermes, so. <laughs> um, but thank you so much for joining us at the Deep Dive panel, and um, hopefully we'll see you around East Denver. <laughs>